To catch you up on this series, my name is Brian. I'm a software developer slash entrepreneur. And in this series, I'm working on my fitness app called Simply. Now I've been working on Simply on and off for about three years now. It initially started off as just a food tracking app, a better way to track your food that wasn't MyFitnessPal, that looked modern and updated and fast and fresh. And then from there, it transformed into a way to track your workouts. This series is covering my journey from actually developing it into something that I use on my own in my free time to a product that I can actually list on the app store and sell and hopefully make a business out of and hopefully scale it to a million dollars in sales and then exit the company entirely and just make a bunch of money and become very rich off of it. But before we get there, we're dealing with problems. And the problem that I'm dealing with in this video, there's two. The first one is that no matter what I do, the workouts don't seem to want to save to the phone. Now, getting kind of technical here, the way that this system works is I create the workout on the app, on the phone. You do your workouts, you add all your exercises, all your sets, your weights, name the workout, whatever you want, all that kind of stuff. And when you're done, you hit complete. And when you complete it, what I'm doing is I'm taking all that information from the phone, sending it to the back end, to the database, to the server, that is doing its own calculations, saving it all and storing it and assigning it to your user, and then sending it back to the phone in a finished format with things like the end date and a completed successful object that the back end knows exists. And then theoretically the front end, the app should also know that this object exists now. The issue that I'm having is that the app for some reason, never seems to know that this object exists, no matter what I do. It thinks it's a new one and it's never seen it before. So the workout that you just completed, the app doesn't actually know that you did complete it. It thinks it's still there. Okay, so I've been looking at this problem for like a day now, which sucks because I don't feel like I've gotten anywhere with it. But what I do know, I do know, do I? Wait. I'm so burnt out. Uh... <laughs> so essentially what I, what I can gather is the problem is this. When I'm creating a workout, I'm identifying that workout by a thing that you call a UUID. And a UUID is basically a 16 character string which is just like a 16 character like identifier basically that lets me know like this workout is this workout. There's two ways of identifying things in like the software world mainly. The first is UUIDs, which is what I just talked about. The second is IDs and IDs are just numbers. And what I realized was for some reason on the back end, I was using uh, UUIDs to identify the objects. On the app, I was using IDs to identify that workouts. So obviously if I send a workout to the back end and I'm like, this is workout number 69, the back end's gonna be like, cool, I don't care. I'm assigning this random UUID to this workout and then sending it back to me. The app is gonna be like, well, I've never seen this workout before because it's not workout number 69 it doesn't have an ID yet or the ID that I'm getting I've never seen before. So let me just like take it in and, and use it. So that's why it's never knowing that I'm completing a workout because they're using two completely different ways to identify the workout. So goal number one is I have to replace ID with UUID. Oh, let's do it. Okay. So now if you look in the code, you can see I have a UUID, which is going to just basically generate a UUID on the app. And then I'm gonna use that same identifier to send to the back end so it knows that I'm talking about this specific workout. You can see that I have a primary key. So primary key is just what you what variable or what parameter you are using to identify this object. And I'm using UUID. So this now matches with the back end, thinks it matches. So this should be good to go. Let's try it out. Okay, now we're looking on the, this is the actual data from the database. These are my workouts. And you can see that each of them now has a UUID assigned to it. So they're, they're able to be identified with this UUID front end and back end. So this problem is good to go. So after I solved the problem of the workouts, not knowing that they were the same workouts that I was sending when I sent it from the app, got it back from the back end, I realized that there was another problem. And that problem was that the way that I was storing dates in my workout objects was not going to work. The way that I'm doing it is using this time format that we basically call UTC, and it's a universal way to track times across all time zones so that no matter where you are or what time zone you're in or what you're doing with that time, they're all going to be referring to the same time. 
they have like an offset with them and, and all this kind of cool information so that you're able to translate this time into whatever local time you need based on where you are. And what I realized was the way that I was mapping these objects and mapping is basically taking data from the back end, turning it into a usable object on the app. The way that I was doing that transformation, the dates weren't tra mapping. They, they just weren't. They were just straight up just being ignored and then being empty. And the way that I'm tracking what workout you're currently doing on the app is it's whatever workout that the app has that does not have an end date. If it has a start date, that means the workout has been started. But if it doesn't have an end date, it means it's never been ended. So therefore that's the workout that you're currently actively working on. But because when I was completing it, the backend has the responsibility of setting that end date and then sending it back to the app. But because I wasn't mapping that correctly, the end date was just like empty. So then it never knew that you completed that workout. So then it would just like would implode on itself and not know what to do. So the next problem was that I had to solve was basically to rewrite the entire way that I'm mapping objects in the app, which sucks because that's an integral part of what I'm doing. So the biggest problem here is that I'm, I'm using a library. So somebody else wrote some code, we call it a library, and I'm using that in my app to map the data from the back end to the front end, from the server to your app. To replace it would basically mean I have to rewrite all of my data objects, which basically is like the representation of like a thing in the app. So like a workout is a data object. A, a set, a workout set is a data object. And I don't have that many, I only, I only have like 10, but the way that I'm doing right now is I'm using this like third party library and I don't really know how it works. And I definitely just like copy and pasted code back in the day to make it work. And what's not working is the thing that I'm using to take in the dates and turn them into dates that the app understands, that's broken. And like, ins I could fix that but I feel like it's probably best scenario to just replace everything and start fresh, but I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna start fresh. We're gonna wipe it all. The only issue with doing this myself is I've never used this library before, even though it's like a super basic part of iOS development. So I'm gonna do some Googling. Now I'm using this like built-in decoding library. So it conforms to this thing, getting kind of technical here, called Codable. And Codable allows me to define coding keys, which basically map to the data that the backend is sending me. So the backend, in the case of a workout group, is sending me a name, a start date, an end date, a UUID, and a list of workouts for that workout group. And then I'm able to take them in here and map them. And this was the problem area here. Uh, I'm using an ISO 8601 date formatter, which is a custom date former formatter that allows me to read in these UTC dates correctly. So now I can officially send dates to the back end, get them back and map the end date so that the app knows that the workout is completed. And the biggest way we can tell this works is if I hit start workout, I fake complete some sets. So let's just fill in some, some numbers here five pounds, we're really lifting heavy for five reps. When I complete this workout, if I hit this, the timer's broken, so that's whatever. Uh, if I hit end workout, this workout should disappear and I should see the, re the, like the add new workout screen. End workout, yes, it's, it's done. We did it, it's done, I'm out. And with the, uh, the ability to set end dates and now I can complete workouts, that completes this terrible section of, of of this video. I know the videos don't seem like they're taking that long, but this took a week to do all of this work and then I'm just making a video at the end to kind of like summarize the work that I did, but it, it sucked having to rewrite all that stuff. Not And it's not always fun making apps and, and writing code and, and making cool things, but I do really enjoy doing these kind of videos. As you can see, there's still issues with the app. The timer doesn't work, I don't know why. Sounds like a good topic for the next video because I'm so done with this one at this point. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.